demystifies the law for you and your family. I'm attorney Robert Monahan, and I'm here today with my friend Kasha Kondraki. Yes, hi. She's a friend of my wife. Uh, her kids play with my kids. She's been on my radio show, Everyday Law, before. And we're here to talk about small claims today. And uh, small claims is our subject because Kasha actually has a small claim of her own that she may bring. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. All right. Well, before we begin, let me just tell you a little bit about who I am because this is our first show. It's kind of special, right? Yes, it is. It's exciting. <laughs> the first show I've ever done and we're on it together. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Um, so I'm Robert Monahan. I'm an attorney. Uh, I have uh, three children. I'm married and my we live in uh, Libertyville. My office, though, is in Gurney and I do mostly personal injury and wills and trusts. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, I was uh, a teen court judge in Gurney in Round Lake Beach. I, um, I was a gurney prosecutor for a little bit, but now my practice mostly focuses on personal injury and on um, wills and trusts. But I do a radio show too. Yes, and actually I got to be one of the guests one you time. You were one so of my guests, it was, was awesome. So much fun. The radio show is called Everyday Law. This is actually Everyday Law TV <laughs> <laughs> because it's, uh, it's on TV. But uh, the radio show is called Everyday Law and the tagline for that again is demystifying the law for you and your family. And that's what we're going to try and do today. I think you've done it successfully in your other So far so episodes. good, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> um, again, uh, we're going to try and demystify small claims. Um, and this show is basically called Small Claims Do It Yourself. And the reason uh, is that a lot of people um, may have a claim that's significant to them, but they can't find a lawyer to help them. Um, a small claim is any claim under 10000 And that's, that's a lot of money. But um, when a lawyer takes $2,500 to $3,000 for a fee for a small claim, sometimes you got to go it alone. Right, and sometimes you don't have that twenty-five dollars to $3,000 or however much it is that's up front. That's you know? right, that's right. And I really think most people could go it alone in small claims court if they just had a little bit of knowledge about how to do it themselves. It seems like a really scary process. Does it? It really does. Yeah. Well, well, especially when you've never done it before, but then once you get you know, used to you gotta it. You got to get everything. your feet wet, yeah. Right. And hopefully you don't have that many in life. Right? <laughs> hopefully yeah. you don't have that many small claims in, in your life. But um, Unless you're a small claims lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing, the first thing that starts a small claim is an injustice. Yes. Okay, something happened to you that's wrong that you want to fix, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, what can I say? And we almost bought a small claim when we got a new dryer. Oh, yeah. We got a new dry and refrigerator, that. and the guy who delivered our dry and refrigerator put a hole in our drywall. Yes, I remember that. That was such a mess because I even came over and saw it. It was ugly. <laughs> it was, it was so ugly. ugly. Yeah, yeah. And we were going to bring a small claim, not so much because it would have been, you know, so expensive or so unjust. But you know what really made us mad? What's that? The guy did not tell us he did it. Oh, I remember that. He right. left without telling us. He knew he did that. He was trying to squeeze that refrigerator in the doorway and right. he couldn't quite do it. And he put a hole in our drywall and uh, damaged our property Right. and left without telling us. And not everybody's a handyman. I'm not handy at all, actually. I'm, <laughs> I'm not either. I'm terribly <laughs> unhandy. Yeah, yeah. But um, you were in a car accident, right? I was. So I was actually driving from the library. We had such a nice play date. We went to the Waukegan Public Library. It was very nice. They have great, great stuff for kids there. Great yeah. library. They really do. They have a wonderful downstairs uh, children's section. Yeah. And upstairs, they had a display that was completely set up for NASA. Okay. And there was a little capsule to show you how they use their hands, you know, with the glove boxes and everything to handle moonstones and everything like that. Parts of different rockets and everything. And we had just seen Hidden Figures and my little girl, Ella, oh, who you know. Oh, yeah, Hidden Figures, the, the one about the, uh, the women helping NASA. In NASA, yeah. yeah. And Ella likes math. So she was super excited about it. We had a great play date with her friend downstairs. And then we were driving down um, the road. It was a main road. And the idea was I was going to go to the grocery store to get bread. And then we were going to go have dinner with my boyfriend and my other daughter. Uh -huh. And none of that happened. And none of that <laughs> happened. You know, because the, the guy needed to go to the liquor store right away. Yes. Yeah, I heard this story from Maria. Maria's my wife. Yeah. The guy needed to go to the liquor store right away. Couldn't and wait. Couldn't wait. And had to turn right in front of you and hit you head on, right? Yeah. You know, and the thing is, like, a lot of people will do this sort of um, move in traffic where if it's two lanes going the opposite way of their going... 
they assume that if this lane is not moving, oh, yeah. then this lane is probably not moving either. Yeah, this yeah. is a lane you can't see. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is the lane you need to be I careful of. I learned that in of. driver's ed. Yeah, yes. yeah. That was a while ago though. Yeah. But it still holds. It still holds. <laughs> it's, you know, however many, you know, five years ago, <laughs> whatever, yeah. however many years ago you do driver's ed, the rules still apply on the road. So I was going straight, speed limit, and he just cut right in front of me. Uh, now I hit him. Okay, well, you had the right of way. But I have, exact, see, yeah. there, there it is. It's all about the right of way. And I think if I remember pr or right, this guy had bad insurance, like a bad insurance company that, it's like American Gosh. Access or something like that. It's very even difficult heard to, of it to before. deal with. Yeah, yeah I never American heard of Casualty, it before. American Casualty, American Access, those are not the best insurance companies. It's not. To deal with for anybody. Yeah, and I even called them at one point and they were they were trying to spin circles around me in the conversation. Telling you things that weren't true, telling you, you things that you, you, you hadn't said, they said you did say, yes. and they're probably recording it or whatever. It's yes. terrible, it's, it's, it's terrible. Mess. So that's, Unjust. It is but unjust. But can you find a lawyer really to take that case? I would take it for you to help me because we're family friends. Sure. But and if, I appreciate that. Right, and I but, would make you dinner for but it. But it. <laughs> it, is, it, is uh, it is a hard case to, to pay a lawyer sure. for because you got property damage. Right. Deductible. You, a deductible. Okay. You were injured and your daughter, you and your daughter went to the ER, right? Yeah. So you yeah. have an ER bill. And a rental car. And a rental car. And out of work. But probably the total amount of your... Your bills right now for your your injuries are under ten thousand. It's under ten thousand. It's still enough to put a damper on, let's say, in my example, we're saving for a house. Yeah. You know, so it kind of skid marked that a little bit, but um, you know, the thing is, like for some people, you know, some people don't even have sick days from work. Yeah. You know, I mean. And the other guy, it's not your fault. You were in this accident. Sure. It's the not other fault. guy. It wasn't even his hit car. you. It, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't even, even his car. His car. <laughs> It wasn't even his car. His friend lent him a car with crappy insurance oh. and he was going to the liquor store probably for the both of them. How terrible. And he didn't even, his license was suspended as well. Oh gosh. What oh, a man. wreck. Okay. It really was. So this is what you would do. The first step in the process, mm -hmm. once you have your injustice in hand, which it sounds like you have a handle on that you've been badly treated, <laughs> you're not getting help from this guy's insurance company. No. You need some recourse, right? Right. So what you should do the first thing you should do is if you're thinking like a lawyer, you have to put on a, like a lawyer cap for a little bit and think like a lawyer. You have to categorize your injustice. Right. Okay. You have to fit all the messy facts that happened to you in this car accident. Missed a dinner date. Yeah. <laughs> Does that count fit, as a... <laughs> fit it all into a category. Right. <laughs> and the category you can find in the small claims complaint. And the small claims complaint looks like this. Okay. Okay. This is a downloadable form online. Looks so you, simple. you go to Google and type in 19th Judicial Circuit. That's our judicial circuit here in Lake County. You go to the Google, type in 19th Judicial Circuit um, mm -hmm. forms, mm -hmm. and it brings you up the list of forms. There's uh, several boxes, one for probate, one for criminal, one for civil and small claims. You click on the civil and small claims box. Okay. It brings a whole list of forms, and you can find the small claims complaint um, in that list of forms and it's a fillable PDF. Oh, and it all it already lays out categories of claims how so nice. Remember how I said you have to categorize your claim. Yes, this form lays out the categories of claims for example Defendant agreed in a written contract to pay me this money But has not paid me even though I have demanded payment you lent money to a friend had a written contract with your friend You check that box okay. another box is defendant wrongfully took destroyed or damaged my personal property Bingo, That's right? the your car, That's your, car the your property damage. Yeah. So you could check that one, but we're not done yet because there's another one that applies here. Oh, really? But, but let's just go through the whole thing. Okay, okay? Yeah. Defendant verbally agreed to pay me money, but mm -hmm. has not paid me even though I have demanded it. Okay? okay, that can happen. Defendant agreed to do repair work for me, but has not done it properly even though I paid for it. That's another one that could be. But that's that's the one in uh, the hole in your wall. <laughs> the hole in my wall, that would apply to me, yeah. That's yours. This one would apply to you. Defendant injured me. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, because we had to go to the ER. Right. I don't want to find that. That bill. It's oh, coming. Gosh, it's on its, it's way. I know it How is. How much is it going to be, right? Oh. <laughs> Finally, there's a catch-all. So the catch-all is like if, if like it doesn't fit any of those other categories and it's a little bit out there, um, right. you might have the catch-all. Oh. 
I had one, one lady ask me about a small, what would be a small claim when her daughter was driving her friend to work on the tollway. Okay. And uh, they didn't have an iPass. So they racked up huge fines for oh. not having an iPass and driving on the tollway. Yeah. They didn't, pay their, they didn't pay the toll, they just drove on the tollway without an iPass. Yeah. So they got sued by the state of Illinois and my friend's daughter. How many daughter, did they run? I don't, a lot. They're <laughs> oh driving to work every day for, for months or something. And oh. then they got hit with this bill. Mm. So my friend said the friend that she was taking to work should pay half of those, half of those bills. Hmm. And uh, I was like, well, that would go in the catch-all. <laughs> I don't know what category that fits in, so you could put that in the catch-all. Okay. But so this small claims complaint, uh, again, it's available online as a fillable PDF. You can fill it out online helps you categorize your claim. So your claim is for um, property damage mm -hmm. and the, the defendant wrongfully took, destroyed or damaged my property, my mm -hmm. personal property, mm -hmm. and the defendant injured me. Mm -hmm. Now once you have your category, on this form you have to describe what happened, okay? And just so you know, what the judge is going to be looking for, this isn't spelled out in this small claims complaint, but the judge is going to be looking for one, what did the defendant do wrong? Okay. Two, and that that's, that's what these lines are for, describe what happened. Okay. And the lines where you describe what happened, you're going to be describing what the defendant did wrong, okay? How he cut acted badly. Off. He cut you off. Because he wanted liquor. He wanted liquor, <laughs> yeah. And um, then how that injured you. Which the liquor's not illegal, but... <laughs> so, right, right. It's not, he was, right. It's, he's, a, he's an adult. But, he is uh, an adult. <laughs> but, uh, so you want to describe what he did wrong and how he injured you, okay? Mm -hmm. And then for every piece of... So those are the elements. Mm -hmm. What did he do wrong and how did it hurt you? Would it help to draw something, maybe? You know what? Well? I, was, we're going, I was just going to say that any evidence you can bring in mm -hmm. as the plaintiff as the person bringing the claim, mm -hmm. it's your job to prove every element of the claim. Maybe take photos. Your cell phone's your best friend in a small claims it complaint. It really is. It's your best friend often anyway. I it mean, is. <laughs> but it keeps you company and everything else. But, but in a small claims complaint, those photos that you can take are mm -hmm. so useful mm -hmm. to show the judge, one, the severity of the impact, Yes. Two, that, that he was there and he did it. I mean, the positions of the car can show what he did wrong. But well, there's a date stamp on a lot of photos that people don't know about as metadata, well. Metadata, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can go to the intersection, take photos of the layout of the area. Yeah, yeah. So just to give us an overall idea, you take your injustice, you categorize it on the small claims complaint, mm -hmm. you figure out from the small claims complaint what elements you have to prove, mm -hmm. and those elements indicate what proof you should bring in. Mm-hmm and what you should leave out. And I think that probably if you go to the library as well, they, they might also be able to give you resources for this. You know, there is, yourself. just so you know, if I, I have it somewhere in my stack, there is in the law library. Ah. The small claims <laughs> booklet, okay? Nice. Yeah, the small claims booklet, it doesn't get into too much substance, but it does answer questions like, what is the small claims court? Who can sue or be sued? Uh, what is a summons and so on? We'll get to the summons in a minute because we're almost we're almost there. But again, um, any kind of claim you may have starts with something that somebody did wrong to you that you're mad about. Right. You categorize it into a into into some kind of form that the judge recognizes because different different claims have different uh, elements. Sure. For example, your claim for your injury and your property damage is very different than the elements of say. Your roof was leaking, mm -hmm. you brought someone in to repair it, mm -hmm. it still leaked after he left, and you paid the guy. Mm -hmm. You sue that guy, those elements are completely different, sure. requiring completely different proof. Right. And in that case, you have to bring in the agreement that you had with the guy or testify that you had a verbal agreement. Right. You have to show with pictures that the roof is still leaking, yeah. and you can testify about it, and you have to show proof of payment. Right. So the different, the different categories of claims spell out different elements and depending on the elements, you have to bring in different proof. And probably maybe even like a third party also. I mean, for example, my car is being repaired, so therefore I have the bill from the you know, car mechanic, yes. and then I have the bill from the emergency yes. room showing yes. why I went in there yes, in the first place. that's absolutely place. right. That's absolutely, canceled check, yeah. a paid bill, yeah. uh, all of those count as evidence. An estimate, just so you know, the rules are that an estimate doesn't count. Really? An estimate does not count as evidence unless 
you bring in the estimator, the, the repair person who really? made the estimate, and he has to testify about it in court for that number on his estimate to be considered proof. Versus, but if you actually if you go and get money, it done. If you paid money, if you're out of pocket, okay. that is proof that that's what that's worth. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I'm wondering why, but yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that. Well, maybe it's because sometimes people will say that all oh, this inconvenience to me, and here's my estimate, and then they take the money and never. And they get don't the get don't get it done. Yeah. So a yeah. paid bill or the estimate with the guy who's going to do the work coming into court. It's kind of an expert witness telling you, telling the judge that he's an expert at this, yeah. that he examined it, and okay. this is what it's going to cost to fix it. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked about the injustice again, just to belabor the point. We've talked about categorizing it. We've talked about the elements of every category. We've talked about finding proof. Mm -hmm. The last thing I wanted to talk about was procedure. Okay. Because okay? that, that scares a lot of people, right? And again, we're providing a framework, a kind of broad framework for how a small claim would work. But the procedure, I think, is really, people don't even know where to start. No. And I've given kind of a, the first thing that I talked about was the small claims complaint. But before you even get there, there's another document called the small claims summons. Okay, it's the okay. small claims summons. Do you know what a summons is? I got a summons one time from a divorce. <laughs> a summons in your divorce? Yeah. It yeah. hails you into he court. He summons me. Yeah. <laughs> really? So you, you get the summons, it hails you into court. Yeah. When you want to sue someone in small claims court, you have to, again, go on the 19th Judicial Circuit's forms page, find the small claims summons, and fill it out. And again, this small claims summons asks for your name and address. Okay the name and address of the person you're suing, mm -hmm. the amount you're claiming, mm -hmm. and then the first thing is the return date, which is here. Again, the return date is here. Mm -hmm. The return date is not the trial date. When you go to the clerk's office with most of the summons filled out, you get the return date from the clerk, and it has to be like 30 days out, okay? okay? And um, the return date is the date by which the defendant has to come into court or, or file an appearance. Like an acknowledge that they got the summons, basically. Basically, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So, um, and if they don't do either, and you can show the judge that the defendant got it, you're entitled to a default judgment on your claim. Oh, nice. So the summons basically does several things. It notifies the defendant he's being sued. Okay. It tells him the date that he has to come into court, mm -hmm. and it lets him know that if he doesn't file an appearance or come into court by that date, mm -hmm. he's subject to a default judgment without ever getting to defend himself. And I think that's part of the reason why some people are also um, scared of the idea of doing a small claim by themselves because they think, well, okay, I go through all these steps and everything like that. What if the person just blows it off and doesn't yeah, care? Yeah. They assume that nothing will happen. Nothing will happen, but this, this is, um, this is a magical document in certain ways that gives the court power over the defendant. And as, at this point in time when somebody's put in a small claims case on their own, have they had to um, pay any money? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me get to that. So okay. you fill out the summons. You get your return date. Okay. You, uh, you, you fill out the small claims complaint as well. Right. You attach them together. Okay. You file them with the clerk's office in okay. the basement of the courthouse. And when you do that, you have to pay a filing fee. And oh, filing okay. fees is like a sliding scale depending upon um, the value of your case. And I think it's in the small claims booklet. Somewhere, either the clerk will tell you what it is depending on the amount, or it's in the small claims booklet and you can check that out before you do it so you know what you have to pay to do this. So it's not a flat fee. It's not a flat fee. It's a, a sliding percentage. scale. Okay. If you're asking for 10000 it's the highest. If you're asking for 200 it's like the lowest. Okay. And, in, and everywhere in between. Okay. So, um, so the small claims summons and, and complaint gets filed with the clerk's office, mm -hmm. and then you have to serve it. Mm. Have you have ever been? You've been served with the summons served. before. Was it a, was it a process <laughs> server that came to your door? Uh, I was a sheriff. A sheriff, he yeah, was yeah. A sheriff, <laughs> awesome. Was, you gotta love that. He At was least a they didn't come big to your guy. work. Oh my gosh, it was so scary yeah, too. Oh yeah, my. I, I would not like to be served with the summons. I was thinking, what did I do? I don't get arrested. <laughs> He probably was really sorry to be doing he, it. Right? He did apologize. Yeah, he was very yeah, nice yeah. about it. Yeah. But um, so you take your small claims summons and complaint. Once it's filed and stamped by the clerk with the stamp, uh, you take it to. You, okay. There's three ways to serve it, just so you know. Mm -hmm. You can have the clerk's office serve it themselves, and they can do that by certified mail. 
Okay. So you have to pay them an additional fee. Mm -hmm. They send it out and they get the green card back when oh. you send something certified. Because they sign it. Right. They receive it. They put that in the court file and that shows the judge the defendant's been served. So mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything more once nice. that's done. Or you can have the sheriff serve it. Yeah. <laughs> I think have the sheriff show up at someone's door. Sometimes I think people do that as a bullying tactic. Yeah. <laughs> you have to take it over to the sheriff's office, which is across Washington Street from the courthouse. Okay. And give it to the sheriff's office and they'll give it to a deputy. Mm -hmm. And then once the deputy served it, they'll give you an affidavit of service yeah. that you give to the judge that shows the defendant's been served. Mm -hmm. The final way is a process server, a private yeah. process server. Mm -hmm. And the private process server will... Um, will basically do the same thing as the sheriff, only it's like a private person. I knew a lady who did it, and she yeah. said that it was sometimes kind of scary, because sometimes the people are kind oh of mean gosh, about yeah, it. Oh my gosh, yeah, no, no. It's not, it, you don't, don't want, harm you don't, the messenger. You, you don't want to, you can't, <laughs> no, no, no. People don't like to be served with summons and complaints. Who wants It to? makes them mad, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or any kind of court document. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Subpoenas. <laughs> no fun. No, no fun, no fun, yeah. <laughs> so then, you come in on the return date, Yeah. okay? Either the defendant is there, and if he's there, the judge will say, look, did you do this? Do you owe her this money? What's their story? And he'll say, I, I do or I don't. I want to defend myself, whatever. Okay. So if the defendant is, is there and wants to defend himself, the judge will set a trial date, okay. and you'll have a trial in two weeks. It happens like that, really fast. Oh, yeah. That's in small claims case, in small claims cases, really? the trial date's really quick. It's not like that with a divorce case. <laughs> <laughs> they go on forever. Oh, my God. As long as the, <laughs> they'll go on as long as the attorney can make money. <laughs> anyway, uh, so then, um, or the defendant won't show, mm -hmm. and then the judge will enter a default judgment for you if you can show him your affidavit of service, okay. or if the green card is in the uh, f the file from the clerks. Now, at the same time, the judge is still going to make sure that like what you presented is, because if you serve somebody, they don't show up, but what you are claiming right. has no evidence, it's not filled out correctly. He'll schedule it, he'll actually uh, schedule it for prove up. And okay. prove up is your opportunity to show the judge just how much the defendant does you. Okay. And, you know, he'll scrutinize your proof and make sure that you have all the documents that show you're entitled to okay. the money you're claiming. So yeah. with even with a the default, then there's still... There's another step yeah. called a prove up. Yeah. Okay. It may happen on that date, but you may not have the documents with you right. to prove it because you don't have to bring anything on that date. It's just uh -huh. the return date. Okay. Gotcha. But, um, but if you do bring it, he may say, well, what do you got? You right. know? But you don't have to bring your evidence on that date. On the return date, nothing happens other than you show up and say, Judge, I'm here to press my claim. The defendant either shows up to say, I'm here to defend it and we'll set a trial date, or he doesn't show and then the judge will set a prove up date for you to prove your losses okay. in your accident or your, your home repair case or whatever it may be. Okay, not too scary so far. Not too scary so far. We get to now, I think, the scariest part for most people, and that's the trial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trials, the trials generally sound scary, right? It, it just, well, I mean, they're on TV all the yeah. time. You know, there's news stations and everything, and the reporters yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Judge Judy or... Judge uh, Judy, oh Judge my Bobber gosh. Whatever, yeah. I don't want Judge Judy yeah. to do my case. So on TV, Judge Judy is up there on the bench. There's a litig There's two litigants. There's the plaintiff and the defendant. Maybe they're witnesses. And behind them is this whole mass crowd of people, right, watching. Yes. Small claims court is nothing like that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> nothing like that. Nobody watches. The courtroom, by the time you have your case called, is completely empty. Okay. okay. So before you get your case called for trial, the judge goes through his docket. And his docket is basically the return dates. Okay. He'll call, you know, Smith versus Jones. So Mr. Smith, have you got service on your defendant? Yes or no? And then, okay, we'll set the trial date, or okay, we'll, we'll give you another chance to serve him if you can't serve him yet. So he goes through everybody that's there on uh, return dates, okay. and then they all leave. Oh. And they all leave, and the only people left are the people there for the trial. No, that's, and that's not too bad. That's you, okay. your defendant, any mm -hmm. witnesses that are there, the judge and the bailiff. Yeah. The judge will take you up in front of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, the defendant, and your witnesses. Everybody that's going to testify has to raise their right hand and swear to tell the truth. Then you start. Then the judge. Then you'll start telling your story about why you're there. You're the plaintiff, so you go first. Okay. The defendant will say, you know, I never saw this woman in my life, judge, or whatever he'll say, right? right. Or, or yeah, I did it, but uh, it couldn't have been that bad. Or right. I was barely going five miles. Whatever he'll say. Whatever. The judge will make his decision, and then it'll be over. And again, it's very private. So I think what scares people most about small claims cases mm -hmm. is the idea that they're going to have to speak in public. I think it's speaking in public, and I think it's also the fact that we have this idea where you know the, ju the judge and 
and the court is like an authority figure over that's us. That's true. And we have to speak to an authority The judge is on a bench. Yes. The judge is on a bench. He's higher than you. He's in a robe. Um, it's very official. You know that very he, official. he's got more than a master's degree in college. Some yeah. of us don't have that. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, um, courtrooms are meant to resemble churches, right? Oh, uh, the first courtrooms were ecclesiastical courts. Okay. And they're meant to look very formal, very serious. Yes. And like churches, solemn. Yeah. And uh, a little scary. Kind of right? make you feel like you're in confession again. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that access to justice isn't often uh, sought by people with small claims, not only because they can't find a lawyer, but because it's such an intimidating environment. It yeah, really is. It really is, right? You know, everybody else is in suits, and maybe you're not a suit person. Yeah, yeah. You know? One thing I would say is if you want to bring a small claim, it's in courtroom 306 in the in the courthouse in Waukegan. Okay. You can go there any time and watch them unfold. I mean, like I said, there's nobody in the audience usually because nobody wants to go watch them. Sure. I mean, but if you want to watch them, it, you can be the audience for the small claims trial. That's true, because when I uh, had jury duty one time, I forget which judge was ours. I didn't end up... Uh, you know, being Serving, called yeah. in. Yeah, but um, he did come in and he told us anytime you want to come in and maybe watch a case and maybe feel more comfortable with the judicial process, let me know. It's and I'll, fun. I'll, I'll tell you which cases are interesting you yeah. can sit in because yeah. th this is a public forum, basically. The other thing I want to mention about small claims cases is that it's always negotiable. Mm -hmm. okay? It's always negotiable. So this form that you can get online, the summons, the complaint, you can fill them out and send the defendant a letter mm -hmm. saying, look, unless you come up with what you owe me, I have these ready. Yeah. All I have to do is go to court and file them. So give me a call and we'll start working on it. Mm -hmm. And any time during the whole process, it's always negotiable. You can always resolve it if you want to without a trial. Right, right. So up to trial, until the judge decides, you can always say, look, I want a deal, you know, or they can say, yeah. look, will you take $1,000? Will you take $5,000? Just right. go away. Stop this. <laughs> stop this procedure. I've had cases settle um, on my recommendation to my client. I wouldn't take the case to court, but I told them, look, you fill out the small claim complaint and the summons. Fill it out completely. Mm -hmm. Send a letter demanding payment to the defendant with them, threatening to file them if they don't come to the table and talk to you. Mm -hmm. And that'll get them to the table because they'll, they'll look official, especially if you send it certified. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right? true. Send that's it certified. True. They get a summons and complaint in the mail. Yeah. Their first thought is, oh, my gosh, I have to go to court, whatever right. it may be. Mm -hmm. But then they get a letter that says, call me. I haven't filed this yet. So it's always negotiable through the whole process. The last thing I'll say is that if you bring a small claim yourself, there's a small claims pro se mediation program. Now, what is a pro se mediation program? First of all, pro se means you represent yourself without a lawyer. Okay. Pro se means for himself or for herself. Okay. And mediation means, and, this, and for pro se's, the judge will recommend this, that a mediator is a, trained, a lawyer trained in helping parties reach an agreement. Oh, kind of, oh, okay, yeah. So the mediator, Somebody you who may, talks between yes, the two. right? So he'll separate you. What so, did you do? What did you what do? Did you what do? did you do, right? <laughs> so he'll separate you. He'll talk to you about your case and mm -hmm. the strengths of it and uh, your evidence mm -hmm. and what you'd like to say to the judge. And then he'll go to the other side, talk to him about his case, his defenses, what he'd like to say to the judge. And then he'll say, you know, Kasha, uh, I think that you've got a strong case here, but you may have trouble proving this because you only have an estimate, then you'll have to bring in the repair guy, whatever. Sure. So can you do that? You know, And if you can, then he'll go to the other side and say, she's got a rock solid case. You're dead to rights. Uh, this is a gift if you give her $5,000. Right. And then you will enter an agreement that mm -hmm. goes in the court file that says he'll pay you $5,000 okay. if he agrees to do that. It's an agreement. And what it avoids is having the judge make a decision in the case. Now, what happens if, let's say, the person that you're going to do this case against has no income? Or maybe they have very limited income. That's a problem. And sometimes it, the, the term for that is judgment proof. It means okay. that uh, the, the, the defendant can't pay. Mm. Um, it happens. It happens. When you get a small claim done, you um you at the end of the case, if you win, you get a judgment order for money. Okay. Okay? That order by itself is just a piece of paper, but it's a piece of paper with some authority. Okay. 
The next phase that maybe we'll talk about someday in a future show is called enforcement, okay? Enforcement procedures. Okay. Procedures to make the defendant pay you. Okay. They're not small claims procedures. Small claims procedures ends in getting the judgment. Okay. But the judgment can be enforced through enforcement procedures. And the first step is to file a citation okay. on the defendant. They have to show up in court mm -hmm. pursuant to your citation with all their financial records. Mm. You can examine all their financial records, their taxes, their bank statements, their assets like their cars, their deed to their home. They have to show up with everything or they can be thrown in jail. Wow. If they don't show up after a certain number of times given, they get a number of chances, I think. Sure. I'm not, I don't always do it, so I'm not really sure how many, but eventually you can swear out a warrant for their arrest for not showing up for a citation. Sure. So you can throw them in prison and um, they have to bring all their financial documents and from their financial documents, usually lawyers handle collections okay. on judgments because they know what's exempt, what can be collected on. For example, I think public pensions or public salaries are exempt, but other kinds of wages can be garnished. You can put liens on bank accounts, sure. liens Houses. on homes. If it's, if it's a straight stand-up citizen, they're gonna wanna pay you yeah. before getting their wages garnished at yeah. work or getting a lien on their, their home or it's a bank a, account. It's getting their bank account frozen. Yeah, yeah. it's embarrassing. And yeah. it's public record. And it's public record, yeah. Your neighbors yeah. are gonna find out about yeah. that. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you have a neighbor like yeah. I have a neighbor. <laughs> so if you have a small claim and you get a judgment against you and the other person's serious about collecting it, sure. they can they can make your life miserable. So you, your, your guy, if he has any assets at all, after you get a judgment in small claims court, you can make his life miserable. Yeah. On that note, I think we, we could end the, end the show. <laughs> Using the law to make someone's life miserable. Look, well, let's hopefully not. <laughs> it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, Kasha. Always Thanks for fun coming. Always hanging out with you. Do you Thanks. have any other questions about small claims that you think you want to address before we close up? Hmm. Uh, I think that we touched on quite a bit of them, and um, I, I think that this sounds like it's very accessible to... Uh, it's not as hard as you might think. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's two forms. Two forms, the summons and the complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it sounds like it's pretty walk through. Yeah, and know? again, you start with the injustice, you categorize it, get your elements, make sure you can prove each element, yeah. have the trial, get your judgment, and then you're done with that part. Right. And that's it. And the rest is up to the judge. The rest is up to the judge, yeah. 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 But the forms aren't that complicated. Like I said, it's almost to check the box and write a few sentences about it and you're done. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I think you should do it. I think <laughs> I, you should do it. I think yeah. I can do this. <laughs> I think I can do this. All right, you've been watching Everyday Law TV, the show that demystifies the law for you and your family. I've been here with my friend Kasha today. We've been talking about small claims. We're going to sign off for now, but thanks for watching. Everybody have a great night. Have a great night.